My name is Johnny Marriott, and this episode we're exposing you to the amazing coastal sea wolves of British Columbia, Canada. We arrived at this spectacular, remote, and incredibly wild island archipelago in the northern tip of the Great Bear Rainforest to search for coastal sea wolves. Setting up pretty soon and then scanning for wolves. So tonight, tide goes down, and that means we go out walking along and hoping that we intercept some wolves somewhere along the way. We pulled into camp today at about four o'clock had to wait three hours for the tide to start coming down and you can see in here now we've got this beautiful big mud flat that has been exposed at low tide and actually at about seven o'clock while we were still on the skiff and the cameraman actually spotted two wolves and we had a big gray adult and a, a bit smaller black adult and they walked along the beach uh, opposite us probably about seven eight hundred meters maybe even a kilometer away and uh, walked all the way along the beach and we saw them kind of head out towards sea. So now we're sitting on the flats and hoping that they come back and we have our first close encounter. But we're only four hours, three and a half hours into being here and we've already seen two wolves. So it's already uh, a little mini success and hope for a lot more as we uh, go through the evening and then into tomorrow. It's now been two days and we've sat out here all day long in this kind of mist and rain and it's been sunny and it's been windy and it's been incredibly cold at times. Uh, but we've just been sitting here and waiting and waiting and waiting. And so far I haven't seen a single thing other than a couple of ospreys and a few sandhill cranes. So we're just gonna keep doing this. We gotta keep on waiting and hoping that we're gonna get lucky with these wolves. We've got six more days, so we'll see what happens. So this location was picked by Marvin and his crew because it involves a pack of wolves that haven't been hunted for decades. And these wolves are quite accustomed to seeing people. And these sea wolves are quite different. They're actually a subspecies of wolf. They're not the exact same as the gray wolf that we see on the mainland. These wolves are slightly smaller and they've adapted to living in a totally different environment, much wetter. They swim a lot. Their primary prey base is actually deer, seals, intertidal marine life, and even things like river otters. So it's quite different than the moose and the deer and the elk that most gray wolves are eating throughout the rest of North America. It's interesting how it all works here. At high tide, we access the area and come into this big bay and we're sitting in herring skiffs that are floating in water but as soon as the tide comes down, those herring skiffs are actually beached. So it's this entire area around me where we can potentially see wolves. And we can only access it when the water comes down enough that we can get out in our waders and wander through the water and get to a dry spot. And then as the water recedes, we're able to walk around a bit and, and keep our eyes peeled for wolves crossing the flats. So as soon as the water starts coming back in, we have about three hours at the tide change where we have to slowly make our way back out to the herring skiffs and make sure we get on them before the water gets too deep to wade through. We got a call from our guide Christopher that there was a wolf out very close to the ocean here. Uh, it was crossing the mud flats and heading out and he thought it was going to come and forage in the intertidal zone here. He actually ended up watching it uh, 
swim across to the little island in the background that you can't really tell that it's an island but there's a little island that piece of land that juts out there 30 or 40 feet off the shore and what the wolves were probably doing is at a high tide the harbor seals come in and they might beach themselves for a little rest and fall asleep and then as the tide falls they're often caught up there quite a ways from from the water and it takes them a little bit to you know be able to move down quickly to the water so the wolves were probably then swimming across at low tide trying to go over the other side of the island and catch a few seals there up high on the rocks. Uh, so we don't actually know if they did or not because we can't see the other side of the island. So Christopher right now, our guide, is over watching that island uh, like an eagle, trying to see if there's any kind of signs of movement, uh, if the wolves are out there or not still, or if they've moved on further down the coast. We stayed out a little too long at low tide and got stranded. So we're having the little Zodiac have to pick us up two at a time and we're hoping to make it out before the waves hit us, which are about five minutes away, 10 minutes away. We're late in the morning on day four, which is the halfway mark of our trip. And while we've had two sightings of wolves, we had the distance sighting in the first evening and then our guide saw one yesterday, we haven't actually had any encounters and we have zero photos so far. So this is kind of when things start getting anxious uh, for my group and also for me in particular, uh, because I don't want to go home with nothing to show for this. So we're really hoping our luck changes. Today we're out right at the tidal zone at low tide, right where the ocean is receding in front of us. And we're hoping that we can catch a wolf coming in and either chasing a seal or trying to grab something from the intertidal zone. So we've kind of left the mud flats and we're way out right at the ocean's edge and hoping that our luck changes. We've now got crew spread out all over the place. Marvin is way up in the estuary, which is about four or five kilometers from here. We've got Carl in between, another member of the crew, and he's scanning the mud flats. And then we've got us right at the intertidal zone here, hoping that we meet a wolf that's maybe cruising along the shoreline somewhere on the outer edge of this island. So we're putting in all the time, and now we just gotta hope that we get lucky. So I don't know what that game's called when you're a kid and your parents hide something and they tell you you're getting warmer and warmer, you're getting closer and closer, but we're definitely getting warmer. We're getting closer to finding our objective, which is the coastal sea wolves. At some point last night, uh, we actually had a wolf walk right in and visit our boats while we were snoozing. We're definitely getting very close now. Hopefully we can just get a sighting during the daytime and actually have an encounter close enough to photograph. While exploring around in the intertidal zone, which is where the ocean meets the tides coming in and out each day, we found this beautiful wolf dining room that features a spectacular view as well as all sorts of different tidbits of things that the wolves have been eating, wolf or wolves, including Canada goose bones, feathers, a lot of Dungeness crab, which are these big crabs eating the crab legs and the bodies of the crab, and then even abalone shells, which is a real delicacy for First Nations people and I'm sure Wolves enjoy it just as much. So they sit here, have their food, and look out on this spectacular view. So day six, we still haven't had a good wolf encounter. Things are getting pretty desperate and we just got word from Marvin. He's on the outside of the island in a boat coming back towards us and he crossed a black wolf heading towards us. So we've moved out onto the mud flats. We're in a little patch of rocks here and we're watching the far shore, hoping that this black wolf continues towards us.
we finally had our first good encounter. We had a black wolf that walked along the mud flats towards us, spotted us obviously. We're a group of seven photographers, so it's not that hard to spot us. We were kind of hiding in these big rocks, but still was able to spot us pretty easily. And uh, kind of skirted around us a few different times. Didn't come any closer than about 80 meters, but definitely was checking us out and walked around us a few times and we were able to get quite a few different shots and a little bit of variety with nice habitat all around it, beautiful big rocks and some mountains in the background. And it was just a lovely encounter. Since I started my photography tour company 10 years ago, I've been searching far and wide for wolf photo tours. And this coastal sea wolf tour that I'm doing in 2019 is actually the first time that I've ever been able to find somewhere that I could bring a group to and have that really good chance of seeing a wolf. Everyone knows the story of Yellowstone and how wolf viewing has become a really big thing down there. In fact, it's a $35 million industry per year. The number of tourists that flock there specifically to see wolves is astronomical. I think in Canada, we really have a unique opportunity. We've got a lot of intact wilderness still available, and we have a large number of wolves. Right now, those wolves are persecuted basically anywhere outside of a national park, so they're heavily hunted and heavily trapped. But it doesn't take much to turn the tide, and we can see that here in the Great Bear Rainforest, where if they were to come about and say, you know what? We want to become a wolf viewing community. We want to take advantage of, of some of those dollars that are going to a, a place like Yellowstone for wolf viewing and want to get in on this ecotourism train, kind of rebrand their community. I really think there's some opportunity for that. And it would just require stopping hunting and stopping trapping. Wouldn't have to turn it into a national park or a park. And I think within five or 10 years, some of these communities would really see a huge boost in, in ecotourism if they did it right. 